There are now over a thousand Pokemon in the National Pokédex, but I wanted to see if I could make one that is entirely new. So I created the Warden Charizard, a Pokemon that can breathe blue fire and has all the amazing powers of a Warden. Now, I'll be surviving a hundred days as the Warden Charmander in Minecraft, fighting in Pokemon battles until I evolve into a Charizard. Will I fulfill my destiny and stop the Wither Gyarados? You'll have to watch until the end to see! On day one, I spawned into Charizard Valley as a baby Charmander with my mom and dad watching over me. Welcome to the world, son. I took my first steps, but the ground beneath me began to tremble as it started turning into Skulk. My body suddenly grew larger, transforming me into a Warden Charmander. Oh my goodness, our son is the chosen one! Just then, dark clouds gathered in the sky and a shrouded figure entered the area. Soon enough, a terrifying withered Gyarados towered over my home. He released his water Pokemon minions onto us to destroy everything. Finally, the time has come to kill the Warden Charmander and fulfill my destiny. The Wither Gyarados fired an attack directly at me, but my dad jumped in front of me. Look out! He took the hit instead, killing him instantly. Dad! No! There's no time, Max. You need to come with me, sweetie. Hurry! I followed closely behind my mom as the Gyarados minions swarmed after us. On day two, my mom and I were running from the Wither Gyarados' minions until we were met with a fork in the road. Oh no. Oh, which way do we go? Without warning, my new warden echolocation abilities activated, causing me to see the incoming enemies in the distance. This way! Are you sure, sweetie? Positive! We kept running and thought we were going to escape until we were stopped in our tracks by a bottomless pit. We have to keep moving. Just be careful and watch where you step. My mom used her wings to fly over the pit and I used the small platforms around to jump over the chasm. You're doing great, sweetie. Mommy's so proud of you. Just as we were about to reach the other side, one of the platforms collapsed under my feet, sending me down into the darkness below. Max, no! <gasps> My mom dove down after me as I plummeted into the unknown. On day three, I landed inside of the depths of the pit to find myself in a deep dark room. Hovering in front of me was a mysterious firestone. What is that? It feels like it's calling to me. Out of instinct, I picked up the stone. My mind began to flood with strange visions. I found myself in the middle of a battle between a Warden Charizard and a Withered Gyarados from the past. They both hit each other at the same time, causing the Warden Charizard to drop six elemental stones. Mark my words. In a hundred years, my descendant will rise again and defeat you, Warden Pokemon, once and for all. You fool! As long as the elemental stones remain, my people will always prevail. I watched as they both died, and I was returned back to the present. It all makes sense now. I have to find the elemental stones and defeat the Wither Gyarados before he kills me. Suddenly, my body began to glow, and I realized I was evolving. I grew bigger in size, gained five hearts, and new powers. I was now a Warden Charmeleon. Just then, the walls of the room broke open, revealing a giant for alligator. I had been discovered. I'm taking you to the Wither Gyarados. The enemy attacked and I braced myself for battle. On days four through seven, I was under attack by one of the Wither Gyarados powerful minions. The for alligator used his bubble beam attack on me, dealing super effective damage. I tried to fight back with my new Charmeleon powers, but even in my newly evolved form, he was much stronger than any other enemy I had faced so far. Any last words? Leave my son alone. Out of nowhere, my mom arrived and hit the minion with a powerful fire attack. The Feraligator didn't go down without sending out one more blast. The Hydro Blast hit my mom dead on, leaving her in bad shape. Mom! I ran to her side, but it wasn't looking so good. Don't worry, mom. I'll get you out of this. Just, just hold on. Max, promise you will defeat the Wither Gyarados and fulfill your destiny. I love you. My mom gave in to her wounds and died. Mom? Mom! Don't leave me all alone. Just then, I heard the sound of approaching footsteps. I couldn't let my mom die in vain, so I ran while I still had the chance. On days 8 through 10, I escaped from the cave back into the overworld. However, an army of Poliwhirls led by Poliwrath were seen looming behind me. You will fall to the Wither Gyarados. The 
enemies closed in. When out of nowhere, lightning struck down onto them, killing them in the blink of an eye. Just then, a Pikachu dropped down in front of me. Sorry I'm late. I came as soon as I could. You're the chosen Wither Pokemon, right? That's right. I'm the chosen Wither Charmeleon, soon to be chosen Wither Charizard. But you can call me Max for short. Right. Well, in that case, the elders sent me on a journey to help you find the next elemental stone. Come with me. I'll take any help I can get. I followed behind my new Pikachu friend until the two of us arrived at a watery pit full of electric water type Pokemon. Watch your step. Those guys are territorial and have a real nasty sting. We platformed over the pit together, but just as I thought we were going to make it across, the platform I was standing on crumbled beneath my feet. On days 11 through 14, I plunged into the water, expecting to meet my instant demise. Oh no, water! Wait, I must be immune now. Thanks, Warden Powers! I didn't get a rest long as I soon saw the electric water Pokemon swimming straight towards me. Hey, what are you doing in our pool? Sorry. Sorry, just trying to pass through. Wait a second. The way the Gyarados told us to take out any warden-looking Pokemon that come through here. Oh, that's right. Well, in that case, get him! They came after me with their electric attacks, and I fought back with the attacks of my own. Unfortunately, they were better swimmers than me. I was beginning to lose. Get away from me! The electrical Pokemon began to overwhelm me with their powers, and I was surely going to die. I need to get out of here. Looking around, I quickly spotted a hole at the bottom of the pit. Get out of there! I'll meet you up ahead! Listening to my new friend, I swam for my life through the hole as the lanterns chased after me. On days 15 through 17, I was escaping the electric lanterns through a hidden passageway. I evaded their incoming attacks until I reached a waterfall and spotted a glimpse of light up above. That must be the way out of here! I swam up towards the exit as fast as my legs could carry me. Once I reached the top, I climbed onto the land and ran away from the threats before they could end me. Phew, I almost died. Where am I? I climbed a little higher through the mountain and was soon at the peak where the Thunderstone was standing right in front of me. That's the next stone I need to gain my power. Before I could grab it, a flurry of lightning hit the ground, revealing Zapdos hovering in front of me. You will not get that stone. This belongs to the Wither Gyarados now. Then I'll have to take it by force. I unleashed my fiery warden power onto the Zapdos to try and overwhelm him. But he had the power of a legendary Pokemon. He endured my attacks and used his Thunderbolt attack back onto me, leaving me with low health. In my current state, I didn't stand a chance. I can't win this. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Dad. On days 18 through 21, I thought I was done for. Until out of nowhere, Pikachu jumped into battle and used her Thunderbolt attack on Zapdos. Fool, I'm an electric type. What could you possibly hope to achieve by striking me with thunder? Well, it did a good job of distracting you. What? While he was distracted, I ran and grabbed the Thunderstone, causing me to evolve once again. I grew bigger in size and sprouted powerful dragon wings. I was now a Warden Charizard with five more hearts and new powers. Time to level the playing field. I used my new Charizard abilities on the electric bird, dealing much more damage than before. But Zapdos held on. I won't go down so easily. He fought back with his electric attacks, but Pikachu continued to back me up from the sidelines. With our combined power, the battle became too much for Zapdos. Together, Pikachu and I were able to defeat the legendary Pokemon. Thanks for helping me back there. How about we form a team? I'm in. Suddenly, we spotted a massive beam of light in the distance. That looks like it could be important. Let's check it out. On days 22 through 25, we arrived at the source of the light and found water Pokemon digging into the ground at a dig site. Dig faster. That water stone isn't going to find itself. Did he say Waterstone? This could be bad. I need to find it before the Wither Gyarados does. There must be a clue around here. I'll distract them. With a burst of electricity, Pikachu leaped into the fray, zipping behind the commander. He unleashed a Thunderbolt attack, shocking the commander and getting his attention. Hey! Come and get me! You little pest! Get him, man! Pikachu took off as the commander and his minions gave chase. This was my chance! Without hesitation, I entered the caverns of the dig site. Before long, I found myself navigating through a mysterious cave system. The water stone has gotta be around here somewhere. I looked around, searching for the water stone. 
but the darkness of the caves made it hard to see. Ugh, I can't see a thing in here. I breathed out some flames in order to light up the cave, revealing that one of the Blastoise's minions was down here with me. Ah! On days 26 through 28, I prepared to defend myself from the water Pokemon. To my surprise, it didn't try to fight me. Wait, we're on the same side. I'm just a Piplup. Nice try. I know who you're working for. Suddenly, I heard footsteps approaching. Shoot, they're coming, hide. The Piplup led me towards cover. I didn't have time to ask questions, so I followed. As we hid, I saw a guard patrolling the cavern. Keep your voice down, we don't wanna get caught. I was careful not to make a sound, and eventually the guard moved on to another underground area. Why did you help me? My family's being forced to search for the water stone. What? You mean that commander up there is forcing all those Pokemon to dig against their will? Yes. If you help save them, then I'll help you find the stone before the Wither Gyarados does. You've got yourself a deal. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's bullies. With a new partnership formed, the Piplup led me through the cavern to the dig site until we reached a pool of water. It wasn't long before we heard the commander's voice. Ben, report. What's your status down there? It's the commander. Take cover. We didn't hesitate as we both dove into the pool to hide under the water. We held our breath to stay hidden as the commander walked into the cavern. Men! Men! Report! <sighs> we stayed silent under the water as the commander looked around. But I couldn't hold my breath forever. I need reinforcements down here. It looks like we have intruders in our midst. Find them. We both knew that if we went up for air, we would be spotted but my lungs were starting to burn. I was running out of oxygen fast. I can't hold my breath much longer. On days 29 through 32, I was underwater on the verge of drowning. But as I started to lose consciousness, the Piplup helped me. Hold still. The Piplup used its powers to give me the ability to breathe underwater. I took a deep breath and felt my strength return just as a group of War Turtle minions showed up to aid the commander. You've all been tasked with finding the intruders. Together, we'll find them no matter what. They all took off in different directions, leaving the cavern. We were finally able to come back up from under the water. We can't evade them forever. Let's move. Right. Where are we going? Back down. Again? I've already come close to drowning twice today. We began to swim downwards towards some underwater caverns. Soon, we found the Piplup's family. They looked exhausted and were being forced to mine by a huge Gyarados guard. Get away from my family! Together, we swam in to intervene. The guard was forced back as we came towards them, but they unleashed an onslaught of water beam attacks. Piplup was able to swim out of the way, but I was hit and thrown back through the water. Ugh, water really isn't my thing. I'm all about fire though. I fought back with my own fire breath abilities, but it was not very effective. Oh no, the water is weakening my flames. You'll have to do better than that too. I tried a sonic boom attack instead, launching the guard away from me. The shockwave from the attack also opened up a new passage. Are you guys okay? Pipla, you saved us. Oh, our little friend Plip is all grown up. Don't just thank me, thank Max for giving me the courage to help. This is a really touching reunion and all, but there'll be a time for thank yous later. We have to move, let's go. I made my way through the new passage as the Piplup and their parents followed behind me. Urgh. I'm not finished with you. On days 33 through 35, we emerged in an air pocket within the cave as the Gyarados guard trailed close behind. We'll never escape this guy. He's too quick. We'll keep this guy busy. Go get the water stone just up ahead. I can't leave you guys. Our family is strong. We can handle this. Go. As the Piplup and his family dove back in to face the guard, I swam on ahead. As I swam further away, I surfaced in a pool within another cavern. On the other side was the water stone. There it is! Time to power up and free these Pokemon! I ran towards the stone, but from above, Blastoise emerged, stopping me in my tracks. I knew there was an intruder somewhere. Come to take this stone, have you? Hand it over! You don't get to push those Pokemon around anymore! In response, the commander suddenly grabbed the stone for himself and evolved into a stronger form. This stone belongs to the Wither Gyarados! Prepare to die! With his new powerful form towering over me, he attacked! On days 36 through 39, I was engaged in combat with the evolved Blastoise. Thanks to his new form, he was more powerful than ever. I flew around and evaded the best I could, but the cavern didn't give me much room to maneuver. I have you now! He hit me with a power 
powerful blast, knocking me onto the ground. As the Blastoise slowly approached me, I tried to think of a way out of this. I thought a Charizard like you would have put up more of a fight. I'm no ordinary Charizard. I used my warden powers and caused a part of the cave to collapse onto the Blastoise. No! He died, and I spotted the water stone in the rubble. I ran forward and claimed it for myself, causing me to gain five hearts and new powers. Only three more stones to go. Just then, a horde of war turtle guards entered the room. You killed our commander? You're going down. Ha, time to test out my new strength. With my new powers on my side, I knew these guards were in for a surprise. On days 40 through 43, I was determined to fight off the war turtle guards. I let my new powers loose, striking the guards and not knocking them out one by one. That's what you get for messing with the Warden Charizard. After finishing off the guards, I ran for the nearest exit, but was blocked when a large dreadnought guard suddenly arrived. The commander fell to weaklings like you. I always knew he was pathetic. I'll crush you into a better job than he ever did. Suddenly, a wall collapsed behind me, and Pikachu emerged from the hole. Come with me, hurry. I escaped through the tunnel with Pikachu as the dreadnought game changed. I wasn't done with you. After much running, we soon emerged into a forest. As we ran, we could hear the dreadnought pursuing us. How are we supposed to shake him? Just head deeper into the forest. We ventured deeper to escape the guard until we eventually came upon a mysterious old mansion. Quick, let's go in there. We entered the mansion and tried to lay low as we watched the guard walk by through the window. Fortunately for us, he decided to move on. Looks like the coast is clear, Pikachu. Pikachu? I turned around to find that he had vanished. I was all alone. Hello? Pikachu? Ah! I heard the sound of Pikachu screaming and moved as fast as I could to find him. Before I could reach the screams, the floor suddenly opened beneath my feet and I fell into darkness. On days 44 through 46, I landed in another room. I looked around to find that I couldn't see Pikachu anywhere. Where am I? Suddenly, a Gengar popped out of nowhere, scaring the life out of me. Welcome to my mansion. You will be trapped here forever in the name of the Wither Gyarados. Let my friend go. I exhaled a plume of fire at him, but he vanished before he could land. Suddenly, a swarm of Gastlys appeared out of nowhere and flew towards me. You will never escape. <laughs> I spotted an exit to the room I was in and ran for it, but the Gastlys came after me. Soon, they were all chasing me through the mansion. While trying to stay ahead of the Gastlys, I heard a voice calling for help. help. Could that be Pikachu? Hang on, I'm on my way. I looked back to see that the swarm of Gastlys was getting closer. Before the Gastlys could catch up to me, I ran into a room and shut the door behind me. I turned and saw the source of the voice that I heard earlier, but it wasn't Pikachu. It was a Frostless. Just my luck. Ah! On days 47 through 50, I was banging on the locked door, trying to run away from the Frostless. Wait, I don't want to hurt you. You're a Frostless in a haunted mansion. I'm going to need a little more convincing. Before I could break through the door, the Gastly's face into the room. I was completely surrounded by ghost Pokemon. The Frostless used Blizzard on the Gastly's, fainting them instantly. Thanks to my Charizard heat, I didn't feel a thing. Now do you believe? Definitely. Thank you. Do you know how to get out of this mansion? The only way out of here is to get the Dusk Stone. It's the source of Gengar's power. Good thing I'm already seeking the elemental stones. Let's go. We left the room, but stopped when we heard a strange voice. Not so fast. We looked around only for a haunter to drop down in front of us. You won't live to see that stone. With the element of surprise on his side, he struck me with a ghost ball attack, knocking me back. I turned around and retaliated with my flamethrower, but but it wasn't very effective. Ugh. This is why I hate fighting ghost types. The haunter floated closer and closer, completely unhurt. So the Frostles and I made a break for it. Run! On days 51 through 54, the Frostles and I were being chased through the mansion by the haunter. With every corner I turned, I could feel him gaining on us. Thinking I could lose him, I took a sharp right, but found myself right back where we started. Somehow, I was going in circles. We Wait a minute. We just came this way. He's trapped us in a loop. The only way out is to defeat him. I turned around and braced myself, waiting for the haunter to appear. As he did, he charged 
towards me, and I prepared a sonic boom attack. When he got close, I released the attack, but he disappeared, and I ended up hitting nothing once again. He reappeared and countered with an acid attack, stunning me and putting me in a daze. I couldn't move. You can't touch me, Charizard. I'm a ghost. <laughs> Good thing I'm here. The Frostless used an Icicle Spear attack on the Haunter, freezing him in place. It was then that I was able to break out of my daze. Now's my chance. I launched a Flamethrower attack with all of my might, causing the Haunter to stagger. I wasted no time, closing in while the Frostless shot her Icicle Spears, and together we took him down. Thanks for the assist back there, Frostless. With you around, maybe I can actually make sense of this place. Suddenly, the world began to distort around me. As the distortion cleared up, I saw that a door had formed before me. Hopefully, one of your friends is actually behind this one. Hey, turns out there was a friend behind that last one, too. And let's find out together. We went through the door as one, unsure of what awaited us on the other side. On days 55 through 57, we came out the other side of the door and arrived on the roof of the mansion. There, I saw Pikachu in a cage. Hang on, I'm coming. Wait, it's a trap. Jumping out from nowhere, Gengar landed before me and hit me with an attack, keeping me from getting to Pikachu. Not so fast. The fun has only just begun. In a flash of light, he transformed, and standing before me was a Rayquaza. What? How is this possible? It's an illusion! Watch out! Just then, the Rayquaza charged up a beam, landing a huge blow on me point blank. Ugh, for an illusion, it sure hurts like the real thing. I evaded his next attack and fought back using a sonic boom attack, but he was far too powerful, tanking the damage and hitting me with a special attack that knocked me out of the air. I need the dust stone to break through the illusion, but where is it? On days 58 through 61, I was being attacked by the fake Rayquaza. I was struggling to dodge any of his attacks, getting hit over and over. I attempted to hurl my flamethrower attack at him, but his hyper beam attack was far too powerful and blew right through the flames. I can't hold out much longer. Suddenly, Frostless spotted a strange glowing spot on the ground. That must be where he's hiding the death stone. Stand back! Frostless dashed through the glowing spot and used her ghost powers to phase into the ground. When she reemerged, she had the dust stone with her. Catch! I caught the dust stone and felt my strength grow, gaining five hearts and a new shadow breath power. The surge in my power caused the Rayquaza illusion to fade away, and it turned back into Gengar. No! My power! No more tricks. You're finished. I lunged at Gengar and hit him with my new shadow breath attack, defeating him once and for all. With Gengar defeated, I ran over to the cage and used my new powers to free Pikachu. It seems you're becoming quite the worthy opponent. Uh, guys, what was that? Out of the storm clouds in the sky, the Wither Gyarados descended towards us. On days 62 through 64, I was being confronted by the Wither Gyarados, my arch nemesis. My friends gathered around me as I braced for what was to come. What do you want? It's becoming clear to me that my men aren't doing their jobs, and if you want something done right, you should do it yourself. The Wither Gyarados came at us, striking us with a Wither Skull attack that sent out a shockwave, knocking us all away. As I landed, I looked up to see him pressing his attack, hitting me with his multiplier nether slash attacks and slicing through my hearts with ease. He was unlike anything I had ever faced before. I fought back with my new Shadow Breath attack, while Pikachu tried to back me up with a Thunderbolt attack, but it wasn't enough. If I want to stand a chance, I need the rest of the stones. The Wither Gyarados closed in on me once again, preparing another attack with his Wither Skulls. The Wither Pokemon will rise above! <laughs> I was sure that this was the end, but Frostless jumped in at the last second, taking the hit for me. Run away and stop him before it's too late. I could only watch as she succumbed to her injuries and died. No! She'll pay for that! We have to leave! Don't let her sacrifice be for nothing! Listening to my friend, I turned and picked up Pikachu flying away from the Wither Gyarados, and knowing that the only reason we were alive was because of Frostless's sacrifice. On days 65 through 67, we all finally managed to escape the mansion, but at the cost of Frostless's life. Her sacrifice was weighing heavily upon 
on us. We have to stop the Wither Gyarados no matter what. In the name of Frostless and my parents. But we have no hope of taking him down without all the elemental stones. Even when you were powered up with three of them, we couldn't hurt him. Then we start looking. You check out the ground and I'll take to the skies. I took off and the two of us went our separate ways to search. I kept an eye out for the points of interest below me as I flew through the air. When I found myself gaining on a Corviknight. Excuse me, do you know anything about elemental stones? When the Corviknight looked at me, I could tell it was not happy. Suddenly, it swooped towards me and attacked. I barely managed to avoid it. This is my domain. Leave now. Pokemon are supposed to share the skies. If you want the skies, then prove yourself worthy. Words weren't working here, so I fired a flamethrower attack at it, but he dipped downwards. The Corviknight was unmatched in the air. With deadly precision, it fired a whirlwind at me, clipping my wing and causing me to plummet towards the ground below. On days 68 through 72, I fell from the sky and landed on a snowbank. I shook off the impact and looked around. I had landed in an icy biome. You fall so pitifully. You're not worthy of taking the skies from me. The Corviknight swooped in again, but I jumped back just in time as it flew past. It tried to hit me with a whirlwind attack, but I fired my own sonic boom attack at the same time. Our attacks meeting in midair and canceling each other out. Enough of this. I quickly unleashed my shadow breath attack, catching the Corviknight off guard and defeating it in a single blow. But my victory was short lived as I felt the ground begin to shake. Oh no. The shockwave from our battle caused an avalanche! Deadly amounts of snow began falling towards me from a nearby mountain. I ran for my life, desperately searching for any kind of protection. Against all odds, I spotted a cave to take shelter in. I ran towards the cave and took cover inside as the endless amounts of snow tumbled down the mountain outside. As I waited for the avalanche to pass, I was shocked to see a Magikarp splashing around in the cave beside me. Wait, what? How did you get all the way out here? There's no water. Splash, splash. Your trainer accidentally used his only master ball to catch you? Splash, splash. And he got so mad he threw you in here? Splash. I probably would have done the same. By then, the avalanche had passed and I re-emerged from the cave. I wasn't sure why, but something was telling me that there was an elemental stone here. I was determined to find it. This will be a lot harder without flight. Well, here goes nothing. I began to venture out into this uncharted icy biome. But not before I dropped the magic carp off in a nearby river. Splash. Splash. On days 73 through 75, I was still traveling through the snowy biome. I was forced to come to a stop when I came across a freezing river. The only way to get across was a series of icy platforms. Still no flight. Looks like I'll have to cross the old fashioned way. I got a running start before jumping to the first platform. I took a deep breath and jumped to the second. I was on a roll. But when it came time to jump to the last platform, I slipped on the icy surface and fell into the water. Ah, Cold, cold, cold! I swam as fast as I could through the freezing water to the other side of the river. <sighs> I'm lucky my tail flame didn't go out. I began to forage for something that could help me get my strength back up. Luckily, I came across a bush full of delicious looking berries. These should help me heal. I picked as many berries as I could hold and immediately began chowing down. Just then, I heard an angry growl. I turned around and saw a furious looking Obama Snow standing there. Those were my my berries. Wait, let's not be rash here. We can always share. But you already ate all of them. Well, <laughs> uh, that's technically true, but... The Obama Snow wasn't interested in negotiating and furiously attacked me. On days 76 through 79, I was under attack by the Obama Snow. Without my flight, I was forced to rely on dodging to avoid getting hit. The Obama Snow released a blizzard attack, which narrowly missed me. I used a stop attack back at the Obama Snow. No. The hit landed, but the Obama Snow was too angry to fall down. I'll make you pay! Look, I know you were hungry, but you're not the only Pokemon that needs to eat! Those berries were mine! It charged at me full speed. I jumped to the side, causing the Obama Snow to slam straight into a wall. Last chance to walk away and stop this stupid fight! Berries! 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 
Ah, uh, fine! It charged towards me yet again. Before it could reach me, I used my fire breath attack on it, taking it out. With the fight over, I noticed a nearby cave entrance. I wonder what's through there. I walked to the new passage and found myself in an icy cave. On the other side of the cave was the ice stone. Yes! This is why I trust my gut. Now let's grab the elemental stone. You will do no such thing. Suddenly, the cave rumbled and the Articuno flew in to stop me. On days 80 through 83, I was being confronted by an Articuno who was trying to stop me from collecting the elemental ice stone. Only the worthy may have this stone. You must prove yourself by defeating me in battle. First the Corviknight and now you? What'll it take to prove myself? The Articuno swooped down towards me from above, aiming to scratch me with its talons. If I have to defeat you to get that stone, then so be it! It used its ice spikes attacks on me, dealing some damage, but not enough to deter me from fighting back. I fought back with my sonic boom attacks, but the Articuno's wings allowed it to fly through the air and dodge with ease. Without my own flight, I couldn't reach it! That's not fair! My wings are clipped! You should be able to defeat me, even without your wings. The Articuno released a whirlwind attack. Thanks to its aerial advantage, I was caught off guard and the attack landed. The Articuno was preparing a follow-up attack when suddenly my warden senses kicked in. With my warden senses enhancing my reflexes, it looked as though the Articuno was standing still. With the aid of my warden senses, I fired off my fire breath landing a direct hit on the Articuno. With that, the fight was over. You've learned to use all aspects of your powers. You are worthy. The Ice Stone is yours. I walked up to the Ice Stone and picked it up. Its elemental energy coursed through my body, causing me to gain five more hearts and new powers. On top of all of that, my wings were restored back to normal. Thank you, Articuno. I promise this stone is in the right hands. With that, I left the cave to seek the other stones. On days 84 through 86, I was flying away from the icy biome with the elemental ice stone in my possession. One more stone to go! Just then, I spotted a light in the distance. I picked up my flight speed and headed towards it. I followed the light and found that the source of it was the leaf stone. There it is! The final elemental stone! I dropped down into the forest to grab the stone when I heard rustling nearby. Who goes there? I spotted what looked like a little oddish running through the grass. I followed after them, but as I got closer, they suddenly turned and hit me with a sleep powder attack. Hey! What you do that for? I passed out and everything went dark. When I eventually woke up, I looked around to find that I was locked in a cage in a village of grass-type Pokemon. They all worshipped the Wither. Ugh, my head. What do you want with me? Our people have known for years that the Warden Pokemon are evil. We are going to hand you over to the Wither Gyarados. You can't believe that! Warden Pokemon are good! I'm willing to do anything to prove that to you! Anything? Hmm. There are a series of trials that are sacred to our people. You will surely die. But if you can complete them, then by tradition, we will have to let you go. If that's what it'll take, then I'll do it! On days 87 through 89, the Grass Village Elder took me to a starting line where the first trial was taking place. The first trial is a treacherous aerial race. Your opponent is Tropius, the greatest flyer we have. May the best Pokemon win! <laughs> sure thing, pal. The Grass Village Elder signaled the start of the race and we both flew forward at high speed. In the air, we were just as fast as each other. We were neck and neck as the finish line approached, but the Tropius had a trick up his sleeve. Warden chump, take this! The Tropius used a razor leaf attack, trying to knock me out of the air. Oh no you don't! I used my warden senses, increasing my reflexes and allowing me to dodge the attack. I used my sonic boom attack back at them, throwing them off course and allowing me to take the lead. The Tropius tried to catch up, but before he could, I crossed the finish line. 
winning the race. Yes, one trial down, two more to go. On days 90 through 92, I was taken to the site of the next trial. Before me was an arena with various heavy objects around it. This is a test of strength. My people are the strongest there is. Let us see if you can match a fraction of their might. The villagers watching began to cheer, and I turned to see a large scyther coming out to face me. I'll give this everything I've got. The large scyther stepped up to go first. As he did, the onlookers started cheering. Without exerting any effort, he took down a massive tree in one blow. Your turn, Pipsqueak. I walked onto the arena and stopped in front of a giant boulder made of obsidian. I was going to need to use everything I had in order to beat the large scyther. Phew, here goes nothing. I dug deep and called upon the powers of all the elemental stones I had. I unleashed a stop attack with all of the elemental powers behind it. The obsidian boulder crumbled to my might. Nothing can stop the Warden Charizard! This is unexpected. It looks like you're ready for your final trial. Bring it on! What is it? Defeat me in battle! I heard the villagers start chanting around me as the Grass Village Elder ran in to attack! On days 93 through 95, I was facing off with the Grass Village Elder. He used his stomp attacks on me, trying to trample me. Warden Pokemon are evil. Nothing you can do can change that. The Wither Gyarados has you all living in fear, doing his bidding. I threw a stomp attack of my own at him, hoping that the impact would help him see clearly. But he persisted, fighting back the entire time. The Wither Gyarados is trying to keep an ancient conflict from ever ending. Your people don't have to be a part of that. We traded blows back and forth for some time, but I could see that I was beginning to wear him down. I was finally able to overpower him and end the fight. Ugh, he's been using us. How could I have been so blind? You can still make things right. I just hope it's not too late. Go and take this with you. He handed me the elemental leaf stone. I took it and gained five new hearts and new powers. All of a sudden, we heard screaming and the village was being invaded by Wither Gyarados goons. The villagers were being terrorized and sent into a panic. All of you are traitors! Face the wrath of our Wither leader! On days 96 through 98, the village was under attack by the Wither Gyarados' minions. I couldn't just stand and watch, so I intervened, using my new warden powers to defend the villagers. Leave them alone! I unleashed everything I had on the goons to get their attention, knocking them back with all of my might. Ugh, the boss is going to hear about this! You're going down! That sounds bad! I can't let the Wither Gyarados follow me here! He'll destroy the village! I need to leave! Not without this! The village elder handed me a map to the Wither Gyarados' fortress. Thank you for everything! I'll make sure they never attack this place again! Max! I turned and saw Pikachu and Piplup! We had been reunited! Guys! I'm so glad to see you! It's finally time for us to take on the Wither Gyarados! But I'm gonna need all of your help if we're gonna win! I'll be by your side until the end, partner. Yeah, for Frostless. For everyone, let's go. Together, we set off towards the Wither Gyarados' fortress, ready for the final battle. On day 99, we arrived at the Wither Gyarados' fortress. It was guarded by an army of large minions. Let's go. As one, we charged into battle. The minions noticed and came towards us, meeting us in the middle in a fearsome clash. My allies and I had impeccable teamwork. Combining our powers, we were able to fight our way through the enemy forces, their numbers dropping as we did. We were able to clear a path through the enemies, but before we could progress further, a legendary Suicune stepped onto the battlefield. This is where your journey ends. They used a powerful water pulse attack on us, forcing us to scramble. It was clear that they were much stronger than the other enemies. I looked over to see more large swamperts making their way towards us. There's more coming. I'll take this guy. We'll hold off the others. I unleashed the strongest breath attacks that I had, hitting the Suicune hard. 
Meanwhile, Pikachu and Piplup held off the rest of the minions. I hit the legendary Pokemon hard and launched them back, crashing them through the wall of the fortress, killing them on impact. Through the hole that was made, I spotted a portal to the nether. I ran inside the fortress and jumped through the portal. On day 100, I emerged in the nether on a giant Pokemon stadium. The Wither Gyarados was waiting for me. Look who finally decided to show up. Enough of your games. I'm going to avenge all the Pokemon who died at your hand and fulfill my destiny. Your destiny is to fall to the Wither Pokemon. We ran towards one another, ready to finish this once and for all. I tried to land the first strike, but he rose up and unleashed a Draco Meteor attack down at me, taking away some hearts. But with all the stones on my side, I was far from ready to give in. I took to the air, avoiding his Dragon Dart attacks and fighting back with my own Sonic Boom attack. I landed a heavy hit, knocking him back down to the ground. The elemental stones have made you stronger, but even you can't stop this! He then unleashed his ultimate black hole attack. I couldn't dodge in time and was getting torn apart from its overwhelming strength. I lost a ton of parts in the process and dropped to the ground. No, I've come too far! The Wither Gyarados came at me again, throwing out powerful attack after powerful attack. But I wasn't going to give up! I fought back and we traded blows until I was able to put some distance between us. When I saw an opening, I took it, channeling the power of all the elemental stones and hitting him with the strongest warden beam attack I could muster. No, my destiny! The Wither Gyarados fell to the combined power of the stones. With that, I had ended the destructive conflict and fulfilled my destiny.